in the spirit of God. Father, we thank you, Father, that it begin in us, Lord God. We pray, too, for those who need prayer in our church, Lord God. We especially pray for the sick and shut in, as they say. We pray for Mr. Baker and Ms. Williams. We pray for those who are in our service today who are not well. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over this service. We pray for souls, Lord, and our family and our friends and our neighbors. I want you to lift up quietly the people you've been praying for. Lord God, I pray you receive these names that are on our hearts. And I pray, Lord, oh God, that they are all saved. Not to judge them, Lord, but to pray that you make a way for them. Father, they may be children or grandchildren. They may be uncles and aunts and parents. Save them, Lord, from the fires of hell. Father, we pray too in Jesus' name that the Spirit of the Lord will move in this service. That as anyone who needs healing, deliverance, salvation, that you would touch them. Oh God, let no man be exalted. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, last Sunday was a uh, student's birthday, and, um, you know, we had a rule that somebody had to tell us, because we don't like to miss someone who served the church so well. I see he's not here today, but we have a gift from him for the church. He is a tremendous young blessing to us, so y'all pray for him. Hallelujah. And also, it's Crystal's birthday today, I believe. She's back here with the red on. Jermaine's friend. Hallelujah, sir. We want to say happy birthday to her. And if ever you want, when I'm going around shaking hands, if it's a special day for you, I try to remember. But remember, I'm getting old, so if I don't remember it, don't have hard feelings. Just say, well, I'm afraid I didn't remember it. Hallelujah. And say, God bless it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, look, I want you to turn with me to uh, Matthew chapter 1. And we have uh, a good time when we baptize and christen kids. You know, it's almost a similar thing today. When you christen a kid, you dedicate him. And when you get baptized, you really turn your life over physically, publicly, to the Lord. Hallelujah. It's not a secret thing anymore. I want to tell you about someone we don't talk about a lot on Christmas. We just think he just was there. But he was a major part of Jesus' life. His name was Joseph. And what I want you to know, the Bible says he was Joseph, son of David. And I want you to know that he was a man who God really chose for a great purpose. Now, sometimes we don't realize who God brings in our lives. You know, it's amazing what your role might be. But you know, it's kind of like when Leon came in our lives, we had no idea we would start the church at that time and how instrumental he has been in helping us do that. You just never know. When God brings somebody into your life, yes. you never know what they're going to be, right? Hallelujah. That's why you always show hospitality to people yes. and open your hearts up to people. You never close the door because you never know who this person might be in your life. Hallelujah. But Joseph was betrothed to Mary. And betrothal is a legal act in the Jewish community. It's not like us. We get engaged and we say, oh, I might marry and I might not know you. Uh, of course, it better not be any of my daughters you say you might marry after you say you're engaged. But, you know, people get engaged and they don't always think they have to get married. But this betrothal in the Jewish custom is, is a commitment. It's a done, say it's a done deal. It's a done deal. Yeah. This word. But Joseph, uh, it's an interesting thing because, you know, in, in Matthew, it gives Joseph's genealogy. And we see that uh, he goes all the way. Matthew does a little bit different than Luke. And as we get to know him a little bit, I want you to see that it ends up with, G with Joseph. But it has all the royal line coming down from David to Solomon to that little guy we talked about the other week, Rehoboam. And, and all the way down. And then it gets down to uh, verse 16. And it says, and Jacob... Y'all see where I am? Yes, sir. The father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Jacob, the father of Joseph. There's another Jacob who had a, had a Joseph, isn't it, in the yes. Genesis? Yes. But this Joseph had a similar thing to that Joseph. They dream. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I want you to see, his role is not to be taken lightly. And even in Luke's genealogy, you have to turn there today. But Luke's genealogy, most people think that it might be Mary's genealogy. But it ends up with Joseph, son of David. That's in chapter uh, 3 of Luke. You don't have to turn that right now. 
But I want you to notice in Luke's genealogy, it's, it does, it's a little bit different than in uh, Matthew's. Mm -hmm. In Luke's genealogy, when it gets down to David, it's not Solomon's line. It's Nathan, oh. who happens to be Bathsheba's uh, son. Hmm. Third or fourth son, I think. Maybe third son. Although Solomon was her, probably her fourth son, and, and Nathan was maybe a third son. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't Solomon <laughs> in the line. But it was very important to understand what these genealogies mean. And Solomon's name means peace, it's funny. And Nathan's main name means gift. Yes, hallelujah. It's kind of interesting in, in, the, in the line of Christ. We get down to Jesus Christ, and they got Nathan where it changes in the genealogy. You have a gift, and you have peace. Hallelujah. Maybe that's who Jesus is, huh? There's a lot of little things, nothing is not important in the Bible. There are a lot of little things to confirm who he is. Yes, yes. And Joseph wasn't just a, a person they just pulled on and said, look, I want you to play like you married uh, to this lady, even though she's not pregnant for you. Because the Holy Spirit had come upon Mary. And what I want you to see about Joseph is something that each one of us need to have in us. So I want to read it in this, uh, in this chapter a little bit of that story. And I want you to notice something before we go to uh, Luke chapter 2 today. In chapter 1 of Matthew, beginning with verse 18. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother was, y'all see where I am? Yes. His mother was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, you know what came together mean, huh? We don't have too many small kids. Okay, listen, people. Came together. Say, so came together. Thank you, dear. She was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a what? I want you to remember that. A righteous man. And did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. Now, listen to this. She had a legal bond to this man. Some people think he was really an old man. Okay? Everything worked for the good. <laughs> you know? And some people think he might have been married before and his wife died and he had a whole bunch of children. But we don't know that much and I don't like to add to the Bible, do you? <laughs> but what we do know is he was betrothed to this virgin and she was only about 13 or 14 years old when she was engaged. That's outlandish. That's, that's ridiculous for us today, but that was just perfect back then. But I want you to see something here. Joseph wasn't just the chosen. He was a righteous man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And how noble he must have been. Think about it now. You met, you engaged to a girl and she comes up to you and say, I'm pregnant, but I'm pregnant for Joe. How many of y'all would marry that woman? Men? Come on, man. Uh -uh. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, how many of you would believe that woman if she told you, hey, look, I'm not pregnant for a man. I'm pregnant for the Holy Spirit. Mm. How many of you men would believe in the marriage anyway? <coughs> I don't see not one hand, y'all. <laughs> so ain't none of y'all righteous. Because <laughs> Joseph was a righteous man. Hallelujah. <laughs> Now, where y'all might be righteous at, you might just cut that thing off without making a big deal about it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, Joseph was that considerate when the whole village knows that she is in, he is engaged to Mary. Now Mary is with child, and he knows it's not his. He's going to divorce her. Why? He's not cutting up like some of y'all would do. <laughs> Give me my ring back. <laughs> Didn't I do that to you? Oh. <laughs> I apologize. That was a long time ago. <laughs> Listen, he didn't cut up because he had a righteous heart. There was something about this man that understood the will of God. He wasn't sure what was going on, I believe. But there's something unique about him. And then we see the first time it happens to him in the next verse. But after he had considered this, after he had considered this, thinking about, you know, he, didn't, he was still considering.
considering divorcing her, but he just, his heart, you know, a righteous person want to do the what? The righteous Amen. thing. Hallelujah. Some people don't even think of what's in their heart, do they? But a righteous person want to do the right thing. Of course, I yeah. heard that gave him my ring back. I knew that was my wife. It didn't matter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, I'm used to uh, sitting with Lucinda before we got married. I eat her food because she didn't eat all her food. So I would just wait and eat mine, and then I wait to eat hers. <laughs> <laughs> so when we got engaged, we were engaged over me eating her pancakes at IHOP. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's how romantic I am, y'all. Pancakes at IHOP. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Poor thing. She had to do with me. But Joseph being so righteous in his heart, he was considering it. And then one day, there's something unique happened to him. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give, give him the name Jesus. Because he will save his people from their sins. Amen. Right now, he's got a word. Just like the word of, was hidden in Mary's heart, here, here he's got the word. This man is not your son, but he is the son of God. Hallelujah. He is the one that's going to save the world. He is, he is here by the Holy Ghost. And you would think, he would say, well, this child is not even kidding me. Some people in my research say he was a foster father. But you know, I start thinking, if God is born to you, and the father that birthed him is by the Holy Spirit, then he's related in every way, shape, and form to you. Hallelujah. Yes. He is fully related to you. He's your yes. son, your brother, your, your, your God. Your, he's everything to you. David wasn't looking at Jesus like, no, he was a foster child. Nah. He was looking at him like, this is everything. Yes. This is everything. He didn't feel like a stepdaddy. He felt like this is everything. Hallelujah. 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 Let me think about it. God made each one of us. How can Jesus possibly be alien to him? The bond had to be quick when this child was born. Mm -hmm. But it's because of this man's righteousness. It's because of his righteous heart that he was chosen by God for a very noble act. He was a, 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 a carpenter, people always want to say. We know he was some kind of technocrat. Some people say he built plows and, and, and yokes. But he was a man who worked with his hands. And he was a man who, who had a righteous heart toward his God. And we're going to see in a few minutes but he was always communicating with God through dreams. And when the Holy Spirit came on, on people in the book of Acts, he, he made sure that there would be dreams and visions poured out on the people. It says that in Acts chapter 2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I want you to think about something. Because you've had a dream. Yes. God has shown you something. Come on, or maybe you had a vision. God has shown you something. But just like this man had a righteous heart, is your heart righteous and you're saying... This is a word from God about me. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And did you stay the course like 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 uh, like Je Joseph did? With your dream, or did you give up on it? Or did you make more out of the dream and didn't understand the dream was a process at work in you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some people think a dream is something magical. A dream is a process when it comes from God. It works through you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have to make it happen. You just have to believe it. Yes. yes. He watches over that word. We saw that last Sunday. Yes. To perform it. So when he gives you a dream or a vision, you don't just start working up, waking up every morning and trying to make it happen or trying to get. No, what you do is keep believing. Keep going to church and keep moving. Yes. If you're trying to make a dream happen, it probably won't happen. It'll yes. just be a struggle for nothing. But if God gives you a vision, yes. or God gives you a dream, yes. surely, surely it's going to come to pass. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. 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 It's going to come to pass. You may hear me every Sunday morning saying we have a great revival. You see, because that, that's a word from God. I'm not worried about it. And I'm not getting on a billboard. 
And I'm not going to make it happen. And I'm not going to do this and do that. I'm just going to let God move. Yes, sir. Anybody who comes to this church, everybody knows. I never go out and say, oh, you better come to our church. Don't go to that church. Don't do this. Everybody came to this church because they wanted to be here. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. And everybody stays in this church because they want to stay here. Hallelujah. 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 Because I'm telling you something, when it's a vision of God, it doesn't matter. It's going to come to pass. Yes, sir. If you turn with me, oh, let's finish reading in here first. So I want to come back. Verse 22. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he had what he had what the angel he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife but he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus now this is a truly righteous man yes yes he didn't just bring her in as his wife he wouldn't have union with her because he knows what in her womb yes I know what's that hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Praise God. Some of us men need to think, well, could we have done what Joseph did? Longing for a wife. Now you got the wife and you can't even be with her. Because what's in her is too holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. This man needs to be lifted up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and we need to appreciate who he was because he truly didn't question God. He dreamed it and he did it. He heard the word and he did it. Mm -hmm. That's that. That's what I work on with my faith, a simple faith. Mm -hmm. I heard it, I did it. God say do it. God say take her as your wife. You take her as your wife. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of y'all think too much. When God said do, he tell you something to do, you can think yourself right out of it. He tell you go bring somebody this and bring them that. No, but they might not be nice to me when I get there. They might not appreciate me. No, you just obey God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the one thing I want you to see about Joseph. He learned to just obey yes. and do. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We think too much. We put too much in between. We analyze too much. When you hear something from God or you get a vision or a dream and God tells you to do something, don't, don't try to figure out why he told you to do that. If you know it's God. See, the problem with some of us, though, we, we make up things. It ain't God at all. And then what happened to you, you get out there and do it, and then you say, I don't need to serve God no more because I did it because God told me, and it didn't work. No, if you did it because God told you, it will work. Mm -hmm. What you need to say, I repent sackcloth and ashes because it must not have been God. Hallelujah. Or you need to say, I need to wait until my time comes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it's going to be one or the other because God's word cannot, don't modify his word. You know, when we first started this church on the word from God, one of the things I was worried about, sometimes it was hard. I had a man tell me he was going to kill me. I had preachers saying, we don't need another church here. What you doing here? I had people doing all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But I had a word from God. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, it wasn't about the building. It wasn't about nothing else. It was all about a word. It's not about the preacher. It's not about nothing. Come on, sir. Yes. We have a, we have a praise team now. Before we played music, and Shannon and, and, and Janelle and all of them out here played like they were singing. <laughs> Some of you, Stephanie, too. Y'all, you didn't do it? Oh, just Stephanie. <laughs> But I'm just giving you an example, okay? Hallelujah. You, you know, you just do what you got to do with what you have. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is that how you do it with God? Yes. Just do what you got to do yes. with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just believe it. That's what one thing I want you to see with Joseph. Now I want you to go with me to Luke chapter 2. It's a lot of dreaming in the scriptures when it came to Jesus. And um, 
I want you to know that when God sometimes wants to communicate with us, he does it with dreams and visions. Sometimes we're too hard-headed just to hear the voice of God. We need to see and we need to dream. And he will use you, your mind, to see the dream. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I always say when I got a dream, I cover it in the blood of Jesus. If it stays with me, I know it's God. Thank you, Jesus. Because the devil will put a dream in your head and he wants you to go do something right away. Yep. I almost make you jump out of the bed and say, I had a dream, I gotta go do this. Well, the Lord ain't in no rush with his word. He yeah. watches over. It's gonna happen. Hallelujah. 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 And in, in chapter two of Luke, we're gonna read again. <clears throat> I first want to show you Nathan in that genealogy. Well, we're not, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna stray off into something else. In verse 4 of chapter 2, So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, mm -hmm. the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. Now, he, you know what? He obeyed the government. He had to go there to register. His wife is pregnant. He's an older man, and he traveled to Bethlehem and went there with his wife with child any moment now. Just to obey God. Yes. But yes. you know what else it did? It fulfilled scripture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because Jesus couldn't be born in Nazareth. Mm -hmm. He had to be born according to Micah, the prophet. He had to be born in Bethlehem. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he just see this is what you do when you're in God and you obey God. You be in his will. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to think about it. If I obey God, I will be in his will. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, while they were, <clears throat> verse uh, 6, while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. Her firstborn. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. I'm sorry. The baby, I'm sorry. The time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And you know the rest of the Christmas story, don't you? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But Joseph was there, and in verse 16, <clears throat> verse 15, when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about, the birth of Christ. So they hurried off and found Mary and who else? Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Isn't this beautiful? Yes, yes. He was watching this child from the beginning. And in chapter 20, in verse 21, on the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus. Mm -hmm. By the way, the angel told Joseph to name him Jesus. And he also told Mary that. Mm -hmm. The name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. When the time of their purification according to the law of Moses had been complete, here he is again, mm -hmm. Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of doves or two young pigeons. Mm. Listen, he's doing every righteous act. Yes. He's supposed to bring this baby to the temple after a period of purification. And he, and he had him circumcised when he's supposed to on the eighth day. He's, he's a righteous man doing what he's supposed to do. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Each one of us need to do the righteous things. Mm -hmm. You go to church on Sunday. You pray every day. You read the word every day. You need to be uh, righteous with your actions. Hallelujah. Yes. Like Joseph. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then if you turn with me to verse 33. After they, after they prophesied about who Jesus was, in verse 33, the child's father and mother marveled at what, had said about, what was said about him. Now they were told that too, but here they are again, getting confirmation from other people. And who's right there? Joseph. In verse 39, when Joseph and Mary had done everything required, say everything, everything. required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me tell you something. This is a mighty man of God who took his son 
and protected him and raised him. Mm -hmm. And they did everything for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And even, you don't have to turn that, but even when it was time for Herod to look to kill Jesus, here come another dream to, to Joseph. Mm -hmm. Remember? And Joseph was told to take this baby and get out of town, get out of Bethlehem, and go down into Egypt. And God sent an angel to guide him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm just doing this for the sake of time, y'all. And then God sent an angel to guide him back. Then he had a dream that he was told Herod had died. And he said, you can come on back. Remember? Yes. You see, Joseph kept a righteous life. Always obeying his dreams and visions from God. Mm -hmm. And trusting God and doing whatever was righteous. What I want you to see in him is what we all need to be. Obedient and righteous. Not judgmental. Not erratic, but stay consistent with what you do for God. When you hear him, obey him. Yes. When he tell you something, trust him. Mm -hmm. yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And whatever you do, remember, it's about God. It wasn't about Joseph. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about his child. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about what he needed to do. It was all about what God told him to do. Yes. Yes. What I'm trying to tell you, we mess up our lives by not just doing God's will. You ask him what it is you want me to do, Lord. How it is you want me to live. And the Lord will give you that heart to know what that is. Even in your marriage, you need to ask God. If you haven't been married, who is it I'm supposed to marry, Lord? Is this the right person for me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, because God knows the future and he knows his will. Mm -hmm. And Joseph was totally a protector and a guard for Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to know all through his life, he was a guardian of God. Mm -hmm. He protected him up until we didn't hear about him anymore. He protected him. He provided for him. Yes. He guided him. He taught him. And this is the job of a father. This is the job of parents. Is to take care of their children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And guide them in this life until they come to the fulfillment of what they're here for. But every child has a purpose. And if you've been given one like Joseph was then you need to guide them into the things of God, not the things you want, yeah. but the things of God. Come on, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joseph did the will of God for his life. Yes, sir. Joseph obeyed the word of God for his life. Oh, yes, sir. And he fulfilled all righteousness for his life. Yes, yes sir. sir. And it didn't really matter. He knew who Jesus was, but he lived not for himself. He lived for the will of God. Thank yes. you, Lord. If we all can see that in his life and begin to say, you know, God, I need that kind of thinking in my heart. Maybe God assigned some children to you that are not even yours. Or maybe God assigned someone to you that's just a friend of yours. But you have to ask God, did you put these people in my life? And you need to be the best father, the best provider that you could possibly be for those children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we had a lot of lessons from Joseph, don't we? Yes. It wasn't really about us. It was about the will of God. It's about the will of God. Some of you turn away people who God put right there in your face. Yes. And you didn't say, Lord, did you send this person to me? Is this the child I'm supposed to raise? Hallelujah. We have a couple, a couple in here that I know of that raised a daughter who was not theirs, but they raised her just like she was. Because God put her there. Hallelujah. And I'm sure she's a blessing to them today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. You see, I want you to think about something with your life. You know, are you looking at God's will or your will? Joseph's will was to marry that woman. And he desired her. But when she became pregnant, he, his will was to divorce her quietly. But he did what God told him in a dream. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you have to question everything all your life. Questioning whether even a child is yours or not. Instead of saying, well, they ain't mine, God put them here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm going to take care of them. Hallelujah. 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 You see, it's the righteous thing to do. It's the righteous thing to do. That's what this man did. He didn't care about what it looked like to other people, did he? Right. Yes. He did the righteous thing. Amen. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to think about it. 
And think about it. Are you going to do the righteous thing? Or are you going to do your will? The two things I want you to remember about Joseph. He was obedient. Hallelujah. Yes. And he was righteous. Yes. Come on, Hallelujah. Jesus. Today when we get ready to pray, I just want you to look at your own heart. And say, you know what, God? Am I obeying you? Do I fulfill righteousness in my life? We have people getting baptized today. God said to be baptized. You don't get baptized because you feel like it. You do it because he said to do it. And if you did it when you didn't know what you were doing, you need to do it again one day. As he needs you. When he puts it on your heart, don't let people give you all a religion. It's not about religion. It's about righteousness. Righteousness is just doing what God said. Hallelujah. That's, that's a righteous person who does what God said. Says. Hallelujah. 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 All you need to do is say, I need to fulfill all righteousness. I need to do what the Lord said. What did he say to be saved? I must confess with my mouth, believe in my heart. Isn't that what I must do? Yes. And he also said, you need to be baptized. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I want to fulfill what? All righteousness. Yes. He told you to teach your children about him. He told you to lead them. Hey, some of us just let our kids do whatever we want, but they want. But you should be bringing your children to church, to Sunday school. Amen. They can't do what they want. Yes. I'm fulfilling God's will. Oh yes, That's not their will to make a decision on who they're going to serve. No, I'm raising them up in Christ. Because yes. that's what he told me to do. Yes. If we stop listening to our will and do his will. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, look, that's, that's what we all need to be doing for each other's children. Making sure they're being raised up in the word. Word. We all need to be like Joseph. Hallelujah. It's not about whether it's yours or not. It's about the will of the living God. Hallelujah. Some of you have been assigned children. It's okay. They're yours. God brought them in your life. Raise them up in him. Do the best job you can. And obey God. Hallelujah. Oh, that tremendous blessing just being in his will. When they, 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 Joseph lived a nice old age. Some people think he lived to 111. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But he was a righteous man. Mm -hmm. Today, I just want you to look in your own heart. And say, you know, have I just been making excuses for myself? I need to just look at God's will for my life. I need to obey him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I need to live a righteous life. Hallelujah. How do I live righteously? I just do the things he told me to do. And all of us have a set of things he told us to do in that book. Hallelujah. <coughs> just do them. See, I'm just going to start doing what he told me to do. That's righteousness. Yes, righteousness is not about a religion or about a church. It's about what you do that God told you to do. Hallelujah. 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 And when you got a dream, people, and you know it came from don't you give up on your dream. That's a word from God. That's what a dream is. It's a word. He watches over it to perfect. Herod couldn't kill that baby. You know that. But better than that, Joseph had plenty money to do whatever he needed to do with that child. Even though he's a poor carpenter. Mm -hmm. But you remember those wise men. They brought gold, frankincense, and bird. He had plenty. Yes. When it was time to go to Egypt, he had the money to go to Egypt. Mm -hmm. God provided for his will. And he will provide for you when you in his will. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, Hallelujah. you got to know that's more to this Christmas story than just a baby born. Yes. It's about how we ought to live. Yes. Yes. All of us need to make a life commitment to God this very day. Yes. And say, Lord, this Christmas, I just want to obey you and live a righteous life. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoever you put in my life, that's who I'm going to serve, Lord. I'm going to take care of whoever you put there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I ain't got no questions about what I should have been or should have done. I just want to be in your way. Y'all about ready to pray? Yes. Can y'all pray that? Yes. How many of y'all understand that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are all together. Almighty Father, as we prepare our hearts for this child that we're christening first, I pray, Lord, that each of us would think about this Christmas story, about our duties to each other in our community. 
And Lord, you find a way to bring children in our lives, to bring friends in our lives, to bring people to help do your will in our lives. Lord, let us not reject that which you brought upon us. And Father, we pray too in Jesus' name that you help us, Father, right now, Lord, to know your will and to do your will. And Father, we know we should be doing righteous things. We should be giving to the poor. We should be bringing offerings to the church. We should participate in church. We're supposed to be there on Sundays. We're supposed to read our Bibles. We're supposed to pray. We're supposed to raise our children in your name. We want to perform our righteousness, Lord. You will provide for us. You will give us what we need to do your will. All I need to do is straighten up a little bit today and line up with the word of God. And trust you, Lord, with my dreams and my visions. That what you told me I was going to be, what you showed me 20 years ago, yes. it's not too late to watch over your word to perform. Yes. This is the day, Lord, that I'm renewing a commitment to my dreams. Yes. I'm renewing a commitment to your word. Yes. And today, Lord, I trust you for it. Right now. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. How many of you Amen. said that prayer in your heart? And I just want you to worship him right now. If you say, Pastor, I need to get myself saved first. Because he told me to come to do that. How many of you say, I need to come up and get saved? Just come on up. You don't have to commit to nothing in this church. You just need to commit to Jesus Christ. Not it's not about joining. It's about yeah. getting saved. Yeah. Hallelujah. You come on up. Come on up. Come on up. We got ministers and I will pray for you. And we will trust God for you. Come on. My heart's now Hallelujah. Yeah. Anybody? Hey, look. You know, this is a good time to make this step. What right you've now. Done for me. You've set me free. And you've removed every barrier. Y'all pray for this. Anyone else? Anyone else? You can't. You must fulfill all righteousness. See, I got to get my life right. I got to line up with the word. I got to line up with the word. Y'all keep praying that everybody in here who wants to get up, that no devil in hell will hold them back. Your dreams are just a step of obedience away. You're wondering why they have to come to pass. They're just a step away. Say they're just a step away. Hallelujah. Today I just want you to look at yourself and say, is it over, Lord? Am I supposed to just be coasting out? No. If you're still alive, you got a word inside of you. If your heart believes in Jesus Christ, you trust that word. Hallelujah. And you trust your dreams. God will supply your needs if you just get yourself in his will. That's all he needs for you to do. Say, I got to straighten up. I got to straighten up. I got to straighten up, line up with the word of God. I can't keep asking God for things. And asking God to help me here and help me there. And I refuse to live a righteous life. I refuse to do his will. Nah. You do his will. And he will provide you. He will guard you. He will lead you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you got people in your life. And you wonder how they got there. And you say, God, I just thank you for them. There must be a reason and a purpose. And you removed it. Hallelujah. Y'all keep praying. This is a beautiful picture today. And it's a beautiful time today. I want you to say in your heart, Lord, am I doing your will? Hey, look, some of y'all think it's by osmosis that you get this right with God. You know what it's by? Taking a step with Jesus. You sit down, when you need to take a step, it's not going to do you no good. Satan will sit on you the rest of your days.
anoint them with oil and trust God for their souls. And if any of them want to be baptized, any time they come to this church, they can. And even today, we'll find some rags and riches around here when we're Yes, Lord God. So there'll be no excuse. I'm just going to know you with oil. And that's to seal you in the Holy Ghost. That's not about me. It's about you. Hallelujah. To say, God, I'm committing to you. I need the Holy Spirit to lead me and to guide me. He is my light. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I just, I'm just ready to commit to you, Lord. I'm ready to do all righteousness. Hallelujah. 